progress for PAL equals pain for Main Street. Let me break this down and make this simple for everyone to understand. They are setting us up. We're going to cover what Jamie Dimon, Larry Fink, and Bill Ackman, these billionaire money managers and banksters, have to say about the economy, recession, and I'm going to show you guys how they know what's coming. They know the sacrifice of the middle class and poor is coming, but it's going to be good for them. They're ready to benefit, and they dance around it a little bit, but I'm going to help you guys kind of read between the lines, uh, read their posture, and understand how they are positioning themselves to benefit the most from the chaos, the sacrifice of the main street economy. I am so concerned because like I said, progress for Powell is pain for main street. And what we're talking about is for Fed Chair Jerome Powell to fight inflation, he's going to have to squeeze out the American economy. He's going to have to continue raising rates. He's going to have to leave them higher for longer. This is what they're telling us they're going to do. And this is going to bring the economy into a recession. This is going to correct all of the equities markets. Many businesses won't be able to make it. Many deals don't work at debt service costs that's now double or triple what it was just a couple years ago. And this is going to disrupt so much as we see the yields on the bonds going from essentially zero, maybe half a percent on your bonds, now upwards of four pushing 5% on the treasuries. And I want to break this down so that it's simple for everyone to understand and so that you can position yourself accordingly. So let's get right on into it, folks. We're going to play this clip right here of Jamie Dimon, CEO of JP Morgan Chase, talking about the possibility of a U.S. recession. Let's take a listen in. So there's a new warning that the odds of a recession may be going up, and it comes from Jamie Dimon, the CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase, the nation's largest bank. In an exclusive interview with CNN's Poppy Harlow, he said a recent collapse of two U.S. banks could push the economy just a bit closer to the edge. Has this banking crisis, even though you think it's almost over, which I'm really glad to hear, though increased chances of a recession here? Yes. But I, I, I look at it like it's not definitive. It's just like another weight on the scale. Okay. And think of it as, you know, people have said it's like raising rates another 50 basis points or something like that. I, we are seeing people reduce lending a little bit, cut back a little bit, pull back a little bit. It won't necessarily force a recession, but it is recessionary. Um, storm clouds ahead, you say maybe some for yeah. the economy? Yeah, I mentioned the QT, higher inflation for longer, yeah. the war. Okay. Those, are, those are pretty strong things. If you look at history since World War II, We've not kind of faced it like that. It's still early in that. That war go on for longer. We don't really know the outcome of QT. I think we'll be writing about QE and QT for 50 years. Quantitative tightening. Qu yeah, quantitative quantitative easing. Easing, yeah. Okay. Diamond also said the current banking crisis is nothing like the financial crisis of 2008. And he believes U.S. lawmakers will, in fact, resolve their dispute over the debt ceiling and avoid yeah. a U.S. default. Yeah, so this clip, this interview was from yesterday, uh, last week, and we did avoid the shutdown, right? We came to a deal. But I laugh because he says, you know, it's, it's going to be financial war. It's going to be an economic recession. Right? He's just so calm, right? So nonchalant. He knows this is perfect for us. He's sitting back enjoying the opportunity. And it's going to be a literal war, right? A, an actual kinetic war fought out in the Ukraine situation as well. And uh, that's going to continue to drive inflation with the supply chain as well. And then even in this article, actually, he talks about interest rates going up to 7%. Now, I really think that he's trying to bait Jerome, you know, Jerome Powell, uh, Fed Chair Powell into doing this, right? Like he's urging Jerome Powell that, you know, are you going to do what it takes? Are you going to raise rates by another 1.5 percentage points to 7%? That would be the highest federal funds rate since December 1990 in March 2022, when the current hiking regime began, rates were at 0.25 to half a percent. So like I said, we went from zero, uh, you can you know, essentially borrow money for free, all the way up to yields at four and 5%. Your mortgage rate on your home is going to push over 8%. And we even see, uh, you know, Jamie Dimon and others. Even the Fed is telling us that they want to raise rates another 25 basis points this year, or at least one more rate hike. We're assuming that it's going to be another 25 basis points. But then the consensus now is that they're going to be raised you know, higher for longer. And so even if we do get some cuts next year, 
We're not going to be cutting by much. And I'm seeing a lot of folks that are running with whole models, whole investment thesis that are baking in rate cuts next year, multiple rate cuts. And I think that is going to be fatal. It's the same mistake that folks are making with the real estate deals where it's buy now, refinance later. I think that they're in for a rude awakening because it doesn't look like they're going to be cutting uh, anytime soon and not by much. And they're going to raise rates even further. And you have Jamie Dimon. I think in this case, he's begging. He's, you know, he's trying to push Jerome Powell. Let's see what you got here, you know, Jerome. Let's see how far we can go with it. Are you, are, do you have what it takes like Paul Volcker did to actually stave off inflation? And they're warning that they understand this inflation is something that we've never seen before. We continue on here, JP Morgan, and this is what I mean by they're benefiting from it, folks. They are loving this. JP Morgan heading for highest ever share of US deposits. So this came out here in May with the purchase of First Republic Bank. Remember, JP Morgan swooped up this bank and they picked up another 72 billion in deposits by picking up First Republic. Uh, or sorry, sorry. After hemorrhaging 72 billion in deposits, First Republic only had 105 billion left at the end of March. And so they, they picked up a significant amount, but they did have a bunch of outflows. And that's what's happening is that these banks, one, they're getting acquired by JP Morgan, but then as the clients get their money out, where are they sending it to? JP Morgan, right? So they just picked up the largest share, and this was reported in May here by risk.net, Joshua Walker writing this article. Prior to the takeover earlier this month, JP Morgan had 1.95 trillion in deposits at its US branches and offices in Q1 of 2023, 11% of the 17.45 trillion national total. So over one tenth of all deposits in America are in JP Morgan. Now, we did start to see an exit of deposits even from JP Morgan and Wells, but historically, right, picking up the biggest share ever. And we can see right here that Wells Fargo, the lender's average deposits fell 7% to 1.3 trillion by the end of June. And then for JP Morgan, they saw the, the nation's largest bank, uh, an average deposit fell 6% in the second quarter to 2.4 trillion from a year earlier. So there's still over 2.4 trillion deposits, right? And they're still doing incredibly well. Uh, but even they are losing some because what folks are doing is they're taking their money out of just sitting in the bank in a savings and they're moving it into T-bills and, and treasury bonds uh, where they can pick up a yield of 4 and 5% versus the savings rate, which is nothing, right? And this is why we're seeing you, you got Bill Ackman and Larry F all right, my bad, folks. So I hit the wrong button and actually killed the show. So let me fire this back up. I left off talking about Bill Ackman and Larry Fink both chiming in on this one. And they say that they expect U.S. Treasury yields to hit 5% like literally in weeks. So Bill Ackman right here, one of the big Wall Street heavyweights here, and you have Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, both saying that they see U.S. Treasury yields reaching 5%. That could happen in a very short time, like literally weeks. And this is the CEO of Pershing Square Capital. And he delivered this at Delivering Alpha 2023 conference, CNBC's. And then you saw Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock last week, make some notes as well. We did see the 10-year pull back to 4.565 after surging to its highest level since 2007. So we literally just went up to our highest level since 2007. This is going nuts. Meanwhile, the 30 yield eased to 4.697. So you're seeing the 10 and the 30, both over 4.5%, nearing 5%. And if this gets achieved, just think of where those mortgage rates are going to go. We're going to be well above 8%, well above that. And um, this is why the whole thing's going bust right now, folks, is how are you going to put your money up to risk? in real estate, in a business, in anything that's going to involve risk when you can go into risk-free 4.5%, 5%. Now, I don't want to lend any money to the government. For me, thank you very much for the 4 or 5, take the, take the yield all the way up to 
six and seven percent, which is what would happen if the Fed funds rate does go to seven percent, like Jamie Dimon is, you know, trying to push Jerome Powell to do, then you would see the yields on these go all the way up to six and seven percent as well. This breaks everything like we've never seen before. But what does it do? It creates the carnage and the chaos that these bakers want. Remember, JP Morgan's one of the largest investors in our Federal Reserve. So that's what we're up against, folks. They have rigged the game. They are in complete control. They are laughing about what is, what is to come. And like, like, like they said, you know, whether they raise another interest rate, you know, another interest rate uh, increase this year, the fact is they're going to keep rates higher for longer. And this squeezes out everybody. This squeezes out everybody. And Jamie Dimon, if he got his way, he smells blood in the water. And that's why he's baiting Jerome Powell to raise to 7%. He doesn't care. You know, they lost some of their deposits, sure, but they still are having record inflows as well. And this is only going to collapse the small regional banks, which brings on more, uh, more assets to the balance sheet, more deposits, more business to JP Morgan and others and to BlackRock. Okay, they're ready for the carnage. Absolutely. They're going to be buying, buying the blood in the streets, and I want you guys to be ready to buy the blood in the streets as well. That's why I make this content. Not to be doom and gloom and like, oh, it's going to be so bad for us. No. Just because we don't have nine and a half, almost 10 trillion assets under management like BlackRock doesn't mean that we can't put our you know, retirement account savings into something else besides what Wall Street's trying to shill us into. We, we, you know, Understanding that bonds are going to continue to have the worst years in history. Understanding that the equities market is overvalued and we're set for a correction. Understanding that digital assets are going to transcend traditional currencies like Larry Fink's BlackRock says, but there's only going to be a few. There's only going to be a couple. I like one. I like maybe a couple more, but it's not going to be 20,000 different cryptos. It's not going to be these seven, seven tech stocks that are hyped off of AI that are going to keep the stock market afloat forever. We're coming into correction. The higher rates for longer is going to do it. And unless we get black swaned, which it's very, very likely we could. I mean, there's plenty of scenarios that we could play out over the next year, over this election cycle that give reason for the Fed to pivot. But once again, that is only going to turn that money printer back on. The assets will go again and you're going to have to be ready to ride that wave up. So this is why you got to stay tapped in with this channel right here, where we break it down for a simple, simple way for everyone to understand. And in a way where I'm, I'm not coming from the same perspective as these billionaire guys, where it's a matter of protecting the wealth and trying to return, you know, five, five, 10 percent. We're looking for the bigger opportunities. Meanwhile, on the other side of our portfolio, we're looking for ways to protect our wealth. That's why I'm in precious metals. That's why I'm not in this, the, the, uh, the stock market right now. That's why I'm only looking at private equity deals, private placements in companies that haven't gone public yet. Thank you very much. I'm not interested in the Wall Street program that's getting shilled to everybody else, right? That's why we're preparing ourselves in real estate because we're starting here. And, and, and trying to break this down in a way for everyone to understand, as we've been doing for the last two and a half years that I've been making content, now we come in to the real carnage, into the real eye of the storm. We've been preparing, and if you're late, if you're just getting tapped in, and if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell, make sure you smash that thumbs up on all of our videos. And if you wanna help your family, friends, and other loved ones get tapped in as well, you can share it out far and wide. But if you're new here, make sure you can you know continue to show up because we're going to break it down from the current events, the cryptocurrencies, what's happening in equities, what's bonds, what is a bond, how do we understand this? And we tie this whole thing together. How do we protect our wealth with precious metals? Do we need to do a little bit of prepping? How crazy is it going to get? It's going to get pretty dang crazy. And these billionaire boys are going to be laughing the whole damn time while they buy up the blood in the streets. And I want us to take advantage of it. And at the very least... I want you to be protected and insulated so that you don't got to turn the key on your business so that you don't see your 401k retirement account slash another 10, 20% this year. I want you guys to survive and thrive until 2025. It's going to be chaos and carnage. Be prepared. Be ready to ride out the storm. Let's do it together. I will see you guys in the next one. God bless you all.